What is the most important tool inside of Luminar Neo? That is what we're going to be looking at in the video today. So you may be thinking that the best tool inside of Luminar Neo, surely that's a subjective opinion, right? Well, you'd be wrong, dead wrong. Now I'm being a little bit facetious because of course you can apply Luminar's creative tools in any order that you like. However, if you want to get the very best quality out of your photo editing, I would strongly recommend that you need to build a really strong foundation onto which to build your edit. And in order to do that, you have to start with Develop Raw. In this example, we'll be working on this landscape, seascape example, but honestly, it doesn't matter because because getting the fundamentals of your technical edit correct are vitally important for any genre of photography. Doesn't matter if it's landscapes, portraits, whatever. So let's get into Luminar Neo and explore Develop Raw a little more. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. I like that. Imported into my catalogue here, we have a 74 second long exposure of Cannibal Bay in New Zealand. We can see in the bottom left info panel that this is a raw photo and absolutely we should be shooting in raw if we want to get the most out of our photo editing experience. So first of all, let's scroll to the very top and it's no coincidence that at the very top of the essentials panel is develop raw. But before I jump into this and start doing an edit through develop raw, I just want to show you what happens if we apply another tool. So if I open enhance AI, another fantastic tool, and I crank accent AI all the way, we've got a nice edit going on already thanks to Luminar's AI capabilities. However, look at develop now. It's no longer develop raw. We've lost the develop raw capabilities. And I get a lot of comments from people when I apply a camera profile. They say, I don't have access to apply a camera profile. Why not? Well, one possibility is you've already applied a tool to your edit as I have done here with Enhance AI. And the other possibility is you're working on a JPEG, in which case that already has a profile hard baked into that file. And if we start working in the develop tool now, we're not actually working on that lovely rich raw data anymore. And so we always want to start with our raw adjustments. So I'm going to right click on the file and just go revert to original. And that gets rid of any edits on this and I can start again. So we're going to kickstart our edit with the develop raw tool. And that is absolutely where we should be starting. And the first thing we want to do is come into the camera profile and change it ideally away from the luminar default and select something that is camera matching. If I jump to the bottom here, you can see we have camera neutral, camera portrait, standard and vivid. If I select the standard, you can see that all of a sudden we just got a little bit of a push towards a better contrast. And if I go for camera vivid, that's even more punchy. But for my preference, what I like to do is select as neutral profile as I have access to. And while initially it doesn't look as impactful, this is going to allow us to work with a greater dynamic range and it's going to allow us to dial in the exact amount of contrast that we want in the photo rather than being predetermined by something like camera vivid, for example, which is already pushing that into a very contrasty shot. If Luminar isn't showing your camera profiles here, you can go to your manufacturer's website, download them and then load them in as custom profiles. From here I'm going to jump into the light section and we have access to four very important sliders. If you haven't nailed your exposure you're able to change that here but I'm pretty happy with mine. We can also start to introduce more contrast or flatten things out further if we want to. If our highlights are overexposed we can bring them back down and we can also give the shadows a bit of a boost if need be too. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on your before and after, no pun intended, and we just click this little icon here to see where we came from and where we got to. And while you may be thinking that that original file is looking a little bit more interesting and impactful than where we've got to here, don't lose sight of the goal here, which is to actually create a base image onto which we can build our edit. Something that contains a full tonal range and doesn't have any blown out pixels. And another way to help us achieve that is with the blacks and whites sliders. So this is going to help us actually define a white point. If I push that all the way to 100, you can see that we're blowing out pixels in this area here. That's not what we want. But at the same time, when I reset it to zero, we currently don't have a pure white point. And so I'm just going to ease this up just to a point where I feel like those whites are in a pretty good place. And now I'm going to do the same with the blacks and just bring those down until I start to feel like my darkest pixels are just about out pushing towards black. And now we've done that again, let's have a little look at our before and our after, before and after. And now we're starting to rebuild a rich contrast and a nice tonal range. Now that we've addressed the white and black points in the image, I feel that we've got a much better contrast going on and the image is already looking a lot better from when we started 
to where we've got to now. But from here, we can absolutely go into the curves and we could refine the contrast further if we want to, but I prefer to use this powerful tool later in the creative process. So during this initial develop raw step, I just leave curves well enough alone. And now I'm gonna jump into the color section. And you can see here that our white balance is what the camera thought it should be, which is as shot. Now we have an option to either come in and choose the color picker. And if we had a neutral gray, we could select on that. However, what I prefer to do in this instance is just grab the temperature slider and start to move that and just visually see where I would like this to sit. Now, normally I think it's a good idea during the develop raw phase to try and get this to sit it as accurately as possible and that's going to give you the most accurate color rendition throughout your file but if you're confident of the direction you want to take your file so for example I would like to take this photo into a more warm sunset -y kind of feel then I'm happy pushing this up or into the warmer temperatures however you really want to avoid going too far too extreme with this adjustment at this stage so I'm just going to warm the temperature up slightly and I'm also going to boost the tint and that will just play into that sunset kind of feel as you know, inside of Luminar, we have a dedicated color tool, and that is here, and we can absolutely crank our saturation up, vibrance, and play with the hue, saturation, and luminance as well, which is a brilliant tool. However, this isn't where I'd be choosing to boost my saturation and vibrance, because we're not working on the raw data in the file at this point. So if I jump back into my edits, it's a much better way to do it inside of the developed raw section because if I boost the saturation and vibrance up here and I zoom in, we are much less likely to see any color banding, any of that nasty stepping between colors that you see sometimes if you push your files too aggressively. Because at the moment we're working on the raw data, which is so much more in depth than if you're working on a flattened image or a JPEG, that allows us to be much more aggressive with these sliders and we're much less likely to get any anomalous banding going on. Now, just like with any of the changes inside of Develop Raw, I don't want to take things too far. I don't want to get too cray cray at this point because I want to leave my creative edit for later. I just want to get this base file looking pretty good, pretty solid, and I can build from there. Similar to how we have a dedicated color tools in Luminar, we also have one for sharpness as well. But again, we wanna make sure that the file's looking good at a base level. So if we look at the detail here on the hill, I'm gonna pop in around 50% sharpening and I'm not really experiencing any halos at this point, just a nice sharp image, so I'm happy with that. Noise reduction, I don't need to do because I shot this at ISO 100 and I'm not really seeing any noise in the image. And the last thing we want to look at is our optics. We want to make sure that we're fixing the chromatic aberrations and we're defringing. I would also love to recommend turning on auto distortion corrections. However, as you can see, when I turn this off and turn it on, it's not actually making any changes to my photo. And I shot this at 16 mil and I know that I suffer from a little bit of barrel distortion with this particular lens. You can actually see the warping on the horizon line here. So this should be being fixed and it's not currently. So maybe when you're watching this video, Luminar Neo has been updated to address this issue, but that's just one thing to be mindful of. But it's not the end of the world because because even though the auto distortion isn't working, we are able to access basically the same thing through a manual slider. So if I start to move this to the left, you can see the image start to get more bulbous and that's known as barrel distortion. And if I take it to the right, things start to get pinched in towards the center of the frame and that is known as pin cushioning. So I just want to move that slider to a point where I feel like my horizon line is pretty much straight. If you find that your lens creates a darkening towards the edge of your photo frame, you can use the D vignette slider. And if I push that all the way up, you can see that those corner edges got a little bit brighter. If I take it back and then put it on again, you can see what it's doing in the corners of the frame. And you can also move the midpoint in or out depending on the look you're after. But for my preference, I don't mind the center of the frame being a little bit brighter. So I'm just happy to leave that alone. But one thing I would like to do is just revisit the blacks and whites because since we've made a slight shift to the temperature, we're starting to get a little bit blown out around here. So I'm just gonna grab the white slider, and just bring that back down slightly. And I may even just ease that temperature adjustment off just a little bit as well. Now I thought we were all done, but I see that my profile has shifted back to the Luminar default profile. I'm not quite sure why. So I'm just gonna click camera neutral, make sure that's turned on. And now we're in a place where we can say, what did our before look like? What did our after look like? Before and after. 
So what we've covered there with the develop raw tool is pretty much the fundamentals of editing any photo. It doesn't matter the genre. That's what I call the technical edit. And it's really important that you get that right before you move on to the more creative editing process. But now I have used develop raw for the heavy lifting of that photo just to make sure those fundamentals are in place. Now I get to have playtime. And for me, this is what I love about Luminar because this is where it excels. We've got access to some really creative tools that just don't exist in other photo editing software. So stay with with me and let's see what we can do just to finish this photo off. Okay, let's jump back into the tools section here and I don't really want to do too much, but I'm just going to smash through a few tools. Accent AI, that's one I always enjoy playing around with, so I'll just throw a bit of that in. If I push the sky enhancer up, that might give us a little bit more richness in that blue. And then what about structure AI? Look at all this lovely detail in the sand down here. Let's see what it does to that. Okay, that's pretty extreme. Let's ease it back. And it's still quite a strong effect, but maybe I just want to paint it in in certain areas. And so I'm just going to get my paintbrush, set my strength, I don't know, around 37, that's fine. And just paint an area through the middle here. And tool the eye before, after, before, after. Just add a nice bit of richness there. Let's do the same up in the clouds. Bring a bit of texture into those. Yeah, nice. Let's close that down and we will now jump into, oh, let's go into the landscape section. Let's try a bit of dehaze. That's certainly bringing out a richness to those colors. Let me ease it off and just toggle it back and forth just to get a real sense of what it's doing. Maybe a bit of gold an hour. Let's see how that performs. And I don't need to worry about the foliage enhancer, but here I'm going to do the same as I did last time, which is just kind of paint this in just a little more judiciously and just paint a little sway through the center of the frame. Toggle our before and our after, and that's just introducing that yellow that this effect was creating just along that horizon line. Let's have a look what might happen if we add a bit of glow. And this is what I enjoy doing is it's just playing around with the tools because you don't always know what's going to happen with certain tools, how they're going to look. And so I like grabbing them and just applying them, pushing them pretty heavy handedly up to, you know, crazy numbers like 100 just to see what it does. And then say, do I want a little bit of that? Maybe I just want to tease it in with about 10% of that effect and then just go for before, after, super subtle, but why not? One of my favorite ways to color grade is with the mood tool. I really love applying the lookup tables. However, we're going to do something a little bit different for me. In this one, we're going to jump into the color harmony section. For working with color, any one of these tools is really great to use. However, I'm going to go with the split color warmth, and this is going to allow me to dial in a warmer color directly into what colors are already warm, the yellows and oranges, and the cool colors, I can push those even cooler towards those kind of bluey tones. And so if I toggle the before and after, that's just adding a little bit more richness into the file. I think I've probably overdone it there, so we'll just ease this back just a little bit before and after. Now, while I'm really enjoying the texture of the sand here, one of the things I don't really like is the fact that some of the sand is just a colorless black. And so let's see if we can address that with the color balance section here. I'm gonna jump into the shadow section, which is where the control for this is gonna reside. And I'm just gonna try and force a little bit of blue coloring into that sand. And I'm gonna try and balance that by introducing some warmer colors again into the highlights. Don't want to take things too far. Some of the sand here probably resides in the mid-tones as well. So let's jump there and start pushing a little bit of blue through into that. Maybe push a little towards the cyan as well. So currently sure it's a little bit strong, but you can see if we look at the before and after that we're pushing this more towards a yellowy orange blue split tone before and after before and after. Here's a good little tip for you. If you think, well, I like what I've done here, but I probably only want about 50% of that effect. There's no overall slider that we can use here. But one thing we can do is just come in and create a mask and just paint it all over with a 50% strength. And so if we have a really nice big brush and click and paint and just cover the frame really quickly with that nice big brush, you know that everywhere we've painted will be revealing this effect now with 50%. So here is our before, here's our after. We've got that effect that we created with that color shift, but it's now been applied with a more reserved 50%. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to do is just sort out my crop because I feel like there's a lot of space at the bottom of the frame here, probably a little bit too much. And so I'm gonna come in and use the crop 
tool and I've clicked crop AI there so that's what Luminar thinks would be a good crop however I want to keep the width of this and I'm just going to change the actual ratio itself so a 16 by 9 ratio same as what we have on our TVs that could be a pretty good option and as you can see we do not have a straight horizon so if we hover the mouse just outside of the crop tool and then hold down we can now rotate the crop any way we like so just keeping an eye on the horizontals we're able to line that up with the horizon line and now we can click and drag this up so that we get our frame as we want it and just click the tool to apply the crop yeah i think i've done what i normally do when i'm creating a tutorial and that is just be a little bit heavy handed with the editing but hopefully you guys get the idea from the principles that i'm sharing with you rather than the aggressive nature with which i've edited this but the proof will be in the pudding because now it's time for my favorite bit which i always love to do and that is to look at our before and after so here we go before and after before and after but let's not forget what the really important part of this video was all about, which is making sure that you get the foundations of your photo edit right by using the develop raw tool. First of all, don't do it later in the process. It won't be available. Only develop will. You won't be working on the raw file at that point. So let's do our before and after, but in stages. Here is our original raw photo. Here is the same photo with the develop raw settings applied. And here's the finished edit with some of those more creative tools. No doubt if you're watching this, you already have Luminar Neo, but if you don't and you think it's a photo editor that could be a good fit for you and your photo editing, go ahead, use the link in the description below, and I'll be sharing much more in the way of Luminar Neo tutorials in the near future. But for now, why not click this video up here because YouTube thinks you might like that one too. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.